that's good for if you're doing like um, workshop breakout sessions and stuff like that, but not for this. Obviously, we want to control who's seen who when. So we want to manually do it because we want to control it. And then you say create. Now, this, this little window here is going to be your best friend all day long. So I suggest you find a way to like um, to keep this open. It does take up the, the room a little bit, but you can move it around here like that. You can even move it around. Oh, wait, no, you can't. Never mind. I was going to say you can move it to a dual screen thing, but you can't. So here, as you hover over, you can see you have a few more options. Oh, before I get into that, sorry. I want to go into options here. So this is where a little bit of the magic happens. Now, there's this option here. It says move all participants into breakout rooms automatically. We already said no before, but if you decide to change your mind for whatever reason, this is where you could say yes again. But it's the same same thing that it just asked us. So I still say no. <laughs> Allow participants to return their main session at any time. I say yes, only because the way that I do my breakout rooms, I like to control it a little bit because it's just a little more professional. Um, you can do this thing where you automatically close breakout rooms after so much time, which some people are using that as um, so that they can um, they can say, oh, my interviews are 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever. And I just want I don't want to have to deal with like the timers and stuff like that. So I'm just going to automatically close the room. That's fine and well and good. But then that means that your next session, you have to reset up the breakout rooms and reassign everybody. And you have to re get your faculty in there, which is the hardest part. So I recommend do not use that. And because I recommend do not use that, the way that I do is at when it's time for them to switch, I tell the candidates to return back to the main room. So they have to have the availability to return back to the main session at any time. So that is obviously an important piece. Now, like I just said, I do not click that one. And then you your countdown after closing breakout rooms. So this is at the end of all the, the interviews and, and you want everybody to come back to the main room and um and all that fun stuff and for whatever reason you um you you need to close all breakout rooms because everybody didn't listen to you and then you're going to close all rooms and when you do that it's going to give it a timer of so many seconds to have them finish their conversation or whatever 60 seconds is actually while you're waiting for the room to close is a really long time so i you can adjust it here Remember, this is seconds, so 30 seconds seems about about right. Okay, so now there we go. Now, remember how I said you can add a room, remove a room at any time that you want? That's where you can do this. Just add a room and say you didn't want to add that room and you messed up. You can delete the room. You can also just have the room sitting there and don't do anything with it. It doesn't matter. So here. If you hover over any of these rooms, you could see it has these extra options. And rename, I highly recommend. So what I would say is to rename each breakout room based off of the faculty member that's going to live in there for the day. So Jones, maybe you have this one is um, Patel and Smith because you're going to do a group interview on them. Maybe this one is going to be your residence. And then this one is going to be um, Johnson. I'm going to delete this one because it's just too many rooms. And then this one is going to be overflow. You can call it whatever you want. Um, you can call it, call it whatever you want. And of course, yours is going to be based on whatever your schedule is. A common question I am asked about this is, what if the time they spend with the residents is like an hour while these other interviews are going on? And that could be like, when I was in radio oncology, they did like group A and group B. And so group A would be doing the faculty interviews while group B would be sitting with the residents the whole time. And then they'd switch after so much time. So that's a perfect example of that. So you can have your resident room um, you can make each of these rooms however long that you want based off of your schedule, because since you didn't do the thing where it closes after a certain amount of time, you have full control over when people come in and out of the rooms. OK, so. I do all that before anybody is even here. So then I have it already here and then you can even push it off down here if you want to to just kind of get it out of your way for a little bit. <coughs> all right. 
So now everybody's all settled. Um, the candidates are in the waiting room. I'll make sure everybody's cameras are working, like um, faculty, fellows, residents. Um, their cameras are working, their mics are on, they don't have, you know, things on their face, that kind of thing. And then I'll say, okay, guys, all the candidates are here, and I'll wait till all the candidates are present or as close amount as possible. <coughs> um, keep in mind when it comes to the um, to this virtual interviewing thing, most of the candidates are very, very familiar with Zoom, so you're not going to have any issues. And most of them are going to be so freaking early because they just want to make sure everything's working. So they expect that they're going to be wait, waiting in your waiting room until it's time to start. So don't worry about like that you're being unprofessional to them in some way. However, if somebody does come late, do not hold it against them like we normally would during interviews when you're like, you can't even meet to your interview on time. What the heck? There's something wrong with your professionalism. Cut them some slack because um, because of the uh, the technology um, capabilities of all this stuff. So just kind of keep that in mind. So then I'll say to everybody, I'm like, okay, are we ready? I'm going to let the candidates in now. And everybody like, okay, we're ready. And then you just let all the candidates in. Remember, as you're letting any of these people in, it's technology. So it takes a few seconds for things to happen. So as soon as you see somebody pop in, they're not ready to go. They like their cameras on, but their, their, their mic hasn't connected yet. And you always see at the bottom, it'll say connecting to audio and it takes a few seconds. So I say wait about 30 seconds for each, each person before you try to address them. So wait till your last candidate that entered 30 seconds after them before you try and say to everybody, hi everyone, um, please let me know if you can't hear me, blah, 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 whatever. So then, um, so then I'll say, I'll say, because the way that we do our interviews is that it's the, the program overview and then we go into the interviews. So I'll say, you know, welcome everybody. I hope you enjoy. So the way we're gonna start this off is uh, Dr. Blah is going to do a program overview. And then after that, um, we'll do faculty interviews, but I'll, I'll step in to let you know um, how those are gonna work when um, Dr. Blah is done. And then I'll be like, oh, hey, Dr. Ball, you could share your screen now if they haven't already. And they're like, okay, thanks, Chris, or whatever your name is, because you're not all Chris. Um, and then at that time, I turn off my video and my um, I mute my microphone. Then, by then, everybody or very close to everybody should be in the room. Um, a common question I'm asked is like, the faculty don't want to hang out while you're doing the overview, blah, blah, blah. I highly suggest you get them to log in as soon as you, you can get them to log in. If your overview is like an hour, maybe you have them come a half hour early or something. Only because you, it's less disruptive to get everybody there before you let the candidates in to make sure equipment and things like that is working that you can help them and stuff like that. And plus, they're going to be a little anxious about making sure the technology works as well. So they're probably going to be more willing than you realize. So I get them all log in. I didn't have one person complain about it. The only caveat to that I had was one of my faculty was in London. So the time difference was crazy to begin with. And and then we, we adjusted. So um, so you rather have it be like the exception that somebody is not there early to make sure everything's working. But you know, Everybody does it their own way. So, so that means that you have pretty much everybody there. So what I do now while they're doing the overview, which is usually about 20 minutes to half hour, um, is I just kind of like prep myself here. So to make my life easier, I like to change people's names that is easy for me to find them all day. And I noticed my, my biggest stressor while I was putting everybody in rooms like throughout the day was just finding people on the list. So what I do, as you, as you can see, like, Anybody can log in with whatever name that they want. You know, it could be based off the, their last Zoom. It could be based off of their account login, which could be some weird code that we all know that we use. Mine could be like C Draconi or Dracon C or whatever. And so you want to make it so you know who the heck they are. And um, you pretty much probably figured it out by them by by um, reason of deduction. And usually your faculty, you know what their regular logins are. But you can change their names. So since you're the host, if you hover over the participants, you click more and you can rename them. So I can say this is Jones. So if this was a faculty member, I would just change your last name to Jones only because that is the way that I keep their name on my list, on my um, my itinerary. So I know that's how I'm going to find them. You can get fancy and put Jones comma candidate or whatever the first name is. But um. But for me, I just put Jones. 
And um, I've had nobody complain about that. The thing is, is you want it to be alphabetical. So when I do, if it's candidate, I uh, rename it their last name, just like you see here. But at the very beginning, not at the end, the very beginning, I'm going to put C hyphen Jones. And you can see it makes their name C hyphen Jones. So then when I go to assign them to rooms, all the C's are together. So all my candidates are together in that lump so I can easily find them. Um, remember, you have to do it at the beginning for this to work properly. And I was asked yesterday, you know, uh, what if the people are like, why did, why is my name C comma or C hyphen Jones or whatever? And I've never been asked that. And I've done this like in all of my interviews. Um, but if they do ask, just say, oh, it's just so I can find you quickly in the list to get you in the room. And they're completely fine with that. So don't even stress. So, so now that they're done with their, or, oh, sorry, while they're still chit chatting, you can like pre assign people to the room. So now, while they're chit chatting and do, you could do your thing. So you can decide that you're gonna put C Jones. Obviously we're gonna have a lot more people in here if this was a real interview. And I'm gonna say that C Jones is actually gonna see faculty Jones, which of course is gonna be confusing, but whatever. Um, and so you can see I have the number one there and that's because I have somebody assigned to it. Something may happen where it goes like this and you don't see, but it no longer says assign. That's because nobody is there to assign. You also notice as people come in after this fact that what will happen is that um, there, um, there you'll see a little um, another group up here that says not assigned. That's where everybody that came in after you've already done this part um, sits until you put them somewhere. So just so you know. So now Dr. Blah has finished his overview and he's like, okay, so Chris is going to um, say a few words or or whatever. So then I come on and I say, I say, well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well, blah, 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 pleasantries. And then, um, and anything that they may need to know ahead of time. So then I tell them, so the next part of the interviews is the faculty interviews. And for this, we use breakout rooms. So what we'll do is we're going to move each of you in a breakout room for your first interview session. You'll have 20 minutes, we'll say, however long your sessions are. Um, you'll have 20 minutes uh, in these sessions at, the 15 minute mark, which is five minutes before you're supposed to finish, you'll notice a um, message at the top of your screen that lets you know that you have five minutes left. Then at the time that it's time to switch, um, you'll get another message and candidates will return to this main room by clicking down their bottom right hand corner to leave the room and faculty will stay in their rooms. So and then we'll have a five minute transition in between each each time period. And then at the end of the day, we'll all return back to this room. I'm like, then I'll say something like, don't worry, I will send you messages to let you know where we're at in the process. And then they'll, I'll be like, and I'll say to the candidates, because the faculty sure already knows, because I've already done my little mock thing with them. So then um, the candidates, I'll say, okay, do you have any questions? And then I give them an opportunity for questions. They, I don't think they have ever asked me a question, because like I said, the people that are doing fellowship interviews, they're so familiar with this because everybody's, mostly everybody is doing this sort of um, version. Um, and they're very familiar because almost every place is using Zoom. Uh, the people that are going for residency interviews, you got to remember, they just finished medical school and in the middle of this COVID stuff. So they were kind of forced onto Zoom at the last minute. So they're familiar. They used breakout rooms for their sessions. They use um, Zoom for all their education. They use Zoom for within they, some of their rotations. So they're very familiar. They're more familiar than probably we are as the coordinators and we're more familiar than the faculty are. So just kind of keep, don't stress too much about the candidates and their familiarity with it. Do stress on the faculty because that's where your issues are gonna happen. Oh, another another caveat to this that I want to say that is, <clears throat> of course I only have one attendee so you can't really see this, but you need to act, even though you've renamed these rooms, your faculty names, you still have to assign the actual faculty member to it. 